Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm going to watch another episode of Peaky Blinders tonight. This is going to be the third episode from the first season. In the previous episode, Thomas was fixing races in order to get Billy Kimber's attention. And of course, at the end of the episode, we see that he did get his attention. And now it looks like they're going to be working together. Or as Billy Kimber said, they were going to be working for him. But I have a feeling it's not going to work out quite that way. Now, Thomas also came to an agreement with Inspector Campbell, or so he thinks, whereas the inspector will leave him and his crew alone, and Thomas will give him back the guns that were stolen, which is the whole reason that Inspector Campbell is there. And, of course, if he doesn't live up to his end of the agreement, Thomas is going to sell the guns to the IRA, which would not be a good thing for Inspector Campbell. Now, the synopsis for this episode reads, Thomas schemes to get closer to Billy Kimber at the races and considers an offer from IRA sympathizers to buy his stolen guns. So it sounds like this is going to be an interesting episode. So let's get started. Concerns the factory down the road at the BSA. Now, as you might know, most of the paint shop there is Irish. Big old place like that, rumors get started. Rumors that there was a robbery. Robbery of what? Guns. Mr. Shelby, a serious amount of guns. And what business is that of mine? It was the Peaky Blinders who took them. What we're trying to say is, Mr. Shelby, that if you were to hear about the whereabouts of said items, we'd pay good money. You have good money? We have the collections from the pubs. But who do you speak? The people of Ireland. The Irish Republican Army. But can he really believe them? You think we're jokers? Am I laughing? Where are the lads? Push the way for me. When history I was I made. Do not about what, so I'll let you know. Creek. I long to see the boys and the old Ira. Next time I could translate. You'd work for me? Thought I already was. So you are coming to the races? Two pounds and shillings. <laughs> Ten shillings. Buy something red. To match his handkerchief. Whose handkerchief? Well, I would assume Billy Kimber. She's going to go poking her nose into things. Well, she was poking her nose around. She was bound to get into a little bit of trouble. Or a whole lot of trouble. I told the coppers Freddy wouldn't come back. It was part of the deal. What bloody deal? What happened to family votes? What happened to meetings? If you let me deal with Ada and Freddy, it'll end in peace. Christ knows you've had your fill of war. You get Freddy out of town, Paul. Or else I'll deal with him myself. Mm. Yeah, he has his end of the deal to keep up. The victim had been drinking in the Black Swan pub, sir. The the pub that you have told me about. And the neighbour said that she saw a young woman leaving the streets where the body was found. A woman, sir. I wondered if there was a connection. A connection with what, Sergeant? Well, you said that your spy was a woman, sir. You have to leave the city. You he think I can't handle Tommy Shelby? You can't. I'm having trouble these days and I'm twice the man you are. <laughs> Let a man sleep on it. No, he doesn't want to leave. I, I don't expect he will leave. I know that because of our family connections, you take my progress personally. But I don't need you to be my father. 
So there's a family connection between the two of them. They would be thinking of you. What guns, Tommy? I thought after your meeting, I thought you needed a break. <laughs> what bloody guns, Tommy? Surprise for you. Come on. Don't forget your bottle. There you go. <laughs> Surprise. Where is she? What is it you've always wanted, Arthur? Me? Eh? When we were in France, you used to say, when I go back to England, I want to own my own pub. So what, did he buy it? Now you've gone soft. You've gone soft time. How do we know it's for sale? Everything's for sale to us, Arthur. <clears throat> We're making a lot of money these days. We need a legitimate business to pass the money from the shop. Well, we know what to do. You spend two thirds of your life in pubs, just pour it. Instead of drinking it. But you can still drink it, that right? Your pub. You do what you want. <laughs> ah! Sorry, gentlemen. Now they have to inform him they're going to buy it from him. What can I get I'll you? meet you here at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Did you buy a dress? Yes, bought a dress. How does it look? This car only seats four. We need more men than that if you to come back alive. It's just me and the girl. This is what's known as your final briefing before going over the top. 60 miles down that road is Cheltenham Racetrack. Johnny, what's our mission, boy? To stick it to the Lee family, Arthur! Those of you with guns, keep them out of it. Unless a gun is pulled on you, we want this done quietly. <laughs> so when do we share out the cash? Yeah. We don't. Had to switch out that little We're one for the big the one. You're in Tommy's army now, boys. Trust so he is going key. there with a bigger army. Let's go. Lady Sarah, Connemara, will you dance with me? See, I, I, I think they're really going to push this romance between the two of them, but is she going to be true? For this romance, or is she just gonna play him as the operative she is? Of course, he's using her too. There, yeah, see, he's working his way around there, making sure Billy Kimber is watching. It's a pleasure doing business with you. Hello, as business. Didn't work out the way he thought it was going to. Cut his ear off. Part of his ear, anyway. the old ear off. And you're gonna need your ears to listen. No more choking on Billy Kimball's boys. Right? We got every penny back. Nice dress. <laughs> and we're out to my pub. Buy the boys a drink. Anyone hurt? Ah, a few cuts and bruises. Off we go, Lady Sarah. <clears throat> now he can deliver that to the feet of Billy Kimber. Your money, Mr. Kimber. Rescued from the Lee brothers and returned to you with a request for a fair hearing. What do you say, Mr. Kimber? He's making his move. <laughs> I say you talk business to my accountant. I want to dance. <laughs> That's why he brought her. No, sir, no. What are you doing here? I've got another hour. Just wait. Listen to me. Just listen to me. I was going to let you go through with this, but in the end, my conscience got the better of me. She looks good on the outside. 
could she has the clap? Mm. Yeah, syphilis. Mm. Well, he's not going to want to do that anymore. I thought I'd use her. Someone told me she had a syph. I thought, what the hell? Call up my better nature. She's, uh, she's a whore. Go and wait in the car. I can walk on my own. <laughs> can we shake hands and forget this ever happens? <laughs> Start of the day, I was Lady Sarah of Connemara. By the end, I was a whore with a clap. <laughs> You're a fucking bastard offering me like that. But then you change your mind. Why did you change your mind, Thomas? Hmm. Changed his mind because he wants her. Okay, well, that was the third episode of Picky Blinders, first season. And it was mentioned in the comments on one of the previous episodes that I watched that the show just gets better and better. I believe that was in the comments of this series. And I would agree with that. Looks like Thomas is moving up in the world. Like I've said in the previous episodes, it really looks like they're pushing for a romance between Tommy and Grace. But if they do have a, a romance between the two of them, is it going to be a real romance for Grace? Or is she just going to play it up because of her job as a spy or as an, as an operative? But it looks like Tommy is falling for her regardless. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out in future episodes. So I'll see you on the next episode.